Hey everyone, I wanted to make this video because I think it'll help a lot of people who have just graduated or who are looking to join this field to see what they should have on their resume or what I had when I got my first job as an environmental engineer. Just so they can at least compare what they have to what I have. A little disclaimer before I begin, by all means this is not a perfect resume. Looking back at it, there's definitely things that I would have changed that I probably shouldn't have included. For sure, definitely a normal job recruiter who's looking at his resume he would critique it pretty hard and say like many things that are wrong with it. But regardless, this is what I submitted back in the past and I can't undo the past. You can make fun of me if you want to, but this is just what I submitted and this is what landed me my job. Also, just to be clear, this is not sent to just like one job. This was sent to like multiple other environmental related jobs. I sent this one resume to over like 300 jobs and I want to emphasize that 300 jobs is a lot. I know it's discouraging to hear, but like that's reality. Whether it was just like a horrible job market at the time, or maybe my resume just sucked that much. I got rejected multiple times. And I'm gonna say this to your face right now, you're gonna face a lot of rejections too. But the good thing is that all you need is just, you know, one acceptance letter to get the ball rolling and get your foot in the door to start this career. So with that all out of the way, I'm gonna go to my computer, open up my resume, and just voice over the details of my resume. This resume was used after I got laid off and transitioned from my cancer research slash biology related job to a fully dedicated environmental engineering position. I'll be going over this resume from top to bottom and explain each experience, the format, and why I decided to keep this experience as opposed to some others. You're free to copy the format if you like it. There's no right or wrong format to resume, just like how it is to write a book. It's up to you how you want to write it. It's not plagiarism or anything because I got this format from one of my career centers at my university or from online. I forgot where, but I took the format from somewhere else too. Starting at the very top, I have my name and contact information. Your name should be big and the first thing the recruiter should see. You want to stand out and be very obvious who you are. Don't be ashamed or embarrassed thinking that you shouldn't do this. You need to do this. I don't know what font size is the best, but anything bigger than the rest of the text. Next is my contact information below my name. The changes I have here is that I changed my address, phone number, and personal information for obvious reasons. I also included my LinkedIn URL beneath that, just in case they want to look me up, you know, see my picture and look at other experiences. I highly recommend it because it also notifies me when another recruiter checks me out so I know that they're not just some robot and are actually doing their due diligence and doing some background check or, you know, like online stalking of potential employees. I also realized that on LinkedIn, you can customize that URL. For example, you see my Randy Lee dash 96A7B and all these other extra numbers. You can remove those random numbers and just have Randy dash Lee on it if you want. Just search how to do that yourself. I won't be explaining that in this video, but there is an option to do that and doing that will make it look cleaner and more professional. That's what I would have changed if I could go back in time. It just looks nicer that way. Also, it's good to have some sort of professional online resume at this day and age. We're no longer doing like paper resumes. It's all like digital now, so please do keep up with the times. If you have like an online resume or some other online project that you can demonstrate your skills, this is where you want to put it. If you have like any personal website or something, put it here. Show them what more you can do that you can't display on a paper resume. Next, I jump straight into my education. I know some resumes have like an objective section. I honestly think it's unnecessary and a waste of valuable space on a resume. If you're applying to a job, I don't see why you need to have like an objective. You want the job so you can pay the bills. I mean, no need to lie and write like I'm passionate about XYZ and want to utilize my skill sets to do blah blah blah. You need to pay your bills and you're applying for this job because this job fits your interests, your education, your experiences, and can provide a steady paycheck all at the same time. I'm pretty sure some job recruiter watching this is angry with what I said, but deep down, you know it's probably true. Sorry, I'm not really professional in my thoughts, I'm just professional on paper. Back to my education category. I formatted my schools in bold, added my graduation date to the right of it, and added my major underneath the university. Some people have the education category on the side, some have it near the end of the resume, and you know, I prefer it at the top, that way recruiters can know right away what education I have. Although there's no correct and right way to you know, format this, I think recruiters just like it to be in this type of order. Even if you graduated with like two completely unrelated majors, I would still add both of it, even if the job you're applying for doesn't relate to both. Me personally, I like diversity and knowing that someone has different skill sets. It doesn't mean like they're a jack of all trades and aren't good at any one thing, but rather it shows that they're something more than just what they're applying for. At least that's how I interpret education. Now we move it to the meat of the resume, which is the work experience. So you'll notice that I write things in chronological order, meaning the most recent job that I had will be the first and then scrolling downwards will be 
other related but past jobs. I like to have at least three bullet points for each section. That way it's not just like a one sentence, very short experience. You want to have at least three. Some experiences are pretty long and lengthy. From what I've heard, it should be long enough to reach one edge of the margin to the other side. So from left to right, you want to make it a full sentence and you want to make it relatable to the position you're applying for. If I keep scrolling down, I know that I have more than one page to this resume. Typically, I know that recruiters do like to have just one page. That way they don't have to waste their time reading through so much stuff. But for me, I wanted to show that I had more than just one short little you know, experience. So my first, I guess, big boy real job experience where I got benefits was with Hitachi Chemical America. This is where I worked at the Cancer Research Lab. Overall, in this section, I just summarized what I did there. Beneath that, I worked at UC Irvine in the Environmental Engineering Department. I worked with my classmate on her research paper, and this is what we did. We collaborated with a water treatment plant, and we just worked on water samples there. So this is where it was related to environmental engineering. That's what I really wanted to point out, that during graduate school, I didn't just study and like, try to finish with my degree, that I did do something in between, that I did work in the environmental engineering department. I remember I was applying for an environmental engineering job. So I wanted to show in this work experience that I had some related environmental engineering experience. Next up is working at UC Riverside in the chemical engineering department. Again, this is related to engineering. Just wanted to clarify that and point out chemical engineering, although it's not environmental engineering, it is still in the engineering department. Again, I was applying for an engineering job, so I wanted to show engineering experience. And beneath that are bullet points just showing what I did. Some experiences have like three bullet points, some of them have like four or five or six. I didn't keep it consistent. I don't know what the right answer is. All I know is that I should have at least three bullet points. So, you know, if I could change some things, I would go back in time and try to shorten it or at least make it consistent. Keep it either three or four or five bullet points. Keep it one sentence long. Some bullet points go down to the next line while some others don't. And just to clean things up, I think it would look nicer if it was either one full long sentence that reached from one margin to the next and it didn't have or cut down to the next line. Next up is the leadership experience. So why I added this section, reason was that uh, I was very young. I didn't have any jobs before that. Just that one other cancer research job I got after graduating. So I was dedicated to wanting to fill up two whole pages. It shows that I'm more than just a job and a work experience, but I also do like, you know, community service or do other things besides just work. All these things that I wrote down were during undergraduate college. Again, it shows that you didn't just study during college. Yeah, I had odd jobs during college, but it didn't relate to the position. Leadership experience shows that you're capable and have like at least soft skills. Scratch that. The first experience I wrote down was actually during my graduate school. So during graduate school, I was a teaching assistant for biology and chemistry. And again, I'm just listing bullet points of what I did there. To make things look nicer, I would shorten it up to make it just one line. I don't like two words just dangling off the next line. So again, if I can go back in time, I would just like shorten it up to make it just one full lengthy line. Habitat for Humanity was during my undergraduate college. I was a secretary there, so that was like a high ranking position, I guess. You weren't just like a regular student or a member. You were part of the organization who collaborated and stuff. The Marine Corps officer program was probably the best thing that stood out to them. It stood out because the job that I applied for was on an Air Force base, so they were really impressed with that. They knew that I can adapt pretty quickly to the military role. So that's why you sort of want to add all these things in, just so they too can know that you're more than just an environmental engineer. The next category are the computer skills. I gained these during undergraduate and graduate school. Again, I'm adding this category because I wanted to fill up tool pages of relevant or important skills. Say I worked at a restaurant, for example, I didn't want to write down that I worked for a restaurant just to make sure I fill up two pages. I'd rather delete that restaurant experience and add in computer skills to make it show that you have these skills that are at least relatable to your position. So Microsoft Office or like MATLAB and AutoCAD, those things are environmental or at least engineering related. Next up, I have laboratory equipment skills. I added this in because it's really the same reason for adding the computer skills, except it's only those separate category. I have so much of these skills because I worked in a research lab for my previous job and I majored in chemistry. So I was familiar or at least I experienced or at least touched these machines during my chemistry major. Honestly, none of it was used during my job as an environmental engineer, but at least the recruiter and the manager, they were glad to know that I knew hard science and like chemistry. This could be the reason why they gave me the hazardous waste and hazardous materials program. So they knew I wouldn't like just categorize certain materials together and like, you know, be a danger to myself. They knew that I was smart enough to separate these items. And that's the are the awards and certificates. So this is where you will show off your achievements. 
Since I applied for an engineering position, I wanted them to know that I had my EIT, the Engineering Training Certificate, just to prove that I was serious about engineering. Turns out that none of them, not even my manager, was a professional engineer. So in a way, I had already outranked them, not in like a threatening way, but in a way where I was more focused and serious about my engineering career. The next bullet point were the awards I got during my undergraduate, the Dean's List. Just shows how smart you are and how hard you work. But honestly, no one cares. Although, I mean, it looks nice and it is impressive. Lastly is this ACS undergraduate award, the American Chemical Society. I got this award during my undergraduate too, just for chemical chemistry, because I really enjoyed the class and I achieved like, I think the highest grade for that class. It's a fun and happy moment when I received it during my undergrad, but none of it was used during my work. And again, no one really cares. Sorry to say that. So overall, I want to talk about the format. In total, there are two pages to this resume. I had a lot to write, so one page wasn't enough, which is why I wanted to make two pages. I'm very sure most recruiters prefer one page only because they don't want to spend the time to look through multiple pages and read it, especially if they have like hundreds of applicants. So just the warning, don't waste their time. I have normal margins, which is just one inch margins to the left, the right, and the top. Obviously you can adjust depending on how much information you have. If you have a lot, just change it to narrow, which can be like 0.5 or 0.75 inches left and right. Again, there's no right or wrong format. You can just choose how much you want spaced out. I want to say this again, I am not a resume expert, so I can't say what job recruiters prefer or if this is good or bad. I just did this because I think it looked good, but that's just my own personal opinion. And that's it. That's my resume. Hopefully you learned a thing or two from this video, such as what to do, what not to do, what to include, what not to include. Maybe even how to format it if you prefer my style versus what you currently have on yours. Again, this is not the perfect resume and it does have many mistakes that I pointed out. This is just the resume that got me into this field and it was, I guess, acceptable to the managers that hired me. The resume is the first thing that job recruiters and managers will see. And if they don't like that, then they'll just trash it. And that could be the reason why I had to apply to over like 300 jobs. So if you don't want to waste your time applying to the next job and, you know, waste the job recruiter's time, then make sure your, your resume is well crafted. The fact that I had to apply to over 300 jobs with this resume could signify that this resume is really bad. So take this resume with a grain of salt if you want to copy the format. Just make sure you have the right experiences and you, you know, write things well, good grammar, make it look professional, and you should be good to go, at least better than mine. Alright, that's all I have for the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.